New CEO Mary Barra quickly put on the defense, appearing in front of a congressional subcommittee investigating several GM recalls tied to ignition switch problems. Representative Tim Murphy. When GM concluded, and you heard from my opening statement, that the tooling cost and price pieces are too high, what does that mean? Uh, I find that statement to be very disturbing as we do this investigation and understand it in the context of the whole timeline. Uh, if that was the reason the decision was made, that is unacceptable. That is not the way we do business in today's GM. How do they do business in today's GM? Welcome back, everybody, to the Steve Mulsberg Show. I'm Ed Berliner, sitting in for Steve. I am always looking for alternative ideas and different opinions. And, of course, since General Motors came up to Switchgate, and we now hear about the people who have died, the accidents, the cover-up, Mary Barra testifying in front of Congress, there have been a lot of people, and I'll be quite frankly, myself included, who have said there needs to be a lot deeper investigation here into finding out who knew, what they knew, when they knew it, how they knew it, and how deep this goes. But I really enjoyed reading a, a recent article in the National Review Online by our next guest, and the words that caught me were, Democrats and their media cheerleaders are throwing the company under the bus as part of their 2014 War on Business campaign. Let us welcome in. He is a Pulitzer Prize-nominated editorial cartoonist, also auto critic for the Detroit News. Henry Payne joins us today. Henry, thanks for being with us. Yeah, nice to be with you. Henry, I got to tell you, I caught that, and it was one of the very few times that I had seen anybody in any editorial sense talk about this as a partisan attack on General Motors. What is it that brought you to this? And give us a little bit more of your thinking behind it as to why, indeed, it is that under the bus from the Democrats. Well, you've got you to remember there are two big constituencies at play here for the Democratic Party in General Motors. The company was bailed out by the Obama administration in 2009 because of the, the, the United Auto Workers is a source of a huge amount of money uh, to Democratic campaigns. It's the, one of the biggest uh, contributors. And uh, the second biggest uh, contributor to Democratic campaigns is trial lawyers. And so now you're seeing the cycle repeat itself, except this time uh, the trial law lobby has a huge interest in suing General Motors over the cobalt uh, so-called switchgate issue. The, the, the top senators you see grandstanding before the press uh, uh, right now, the senator from, uh, from Missouri, uh, Barbara Boxer from California, a senator from Connecticut, uh, all, all receive huge contributions from the trial lobby. So. There's, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a big, uh, there's a lot of money at stake here for, for Democrats. Let me ask you something, though, that, that catches me right away, because, of course, as we hear, as far as the unions are concerned, the left, is the left is always on the side of the unions. The left and the unions are always connected. And you mentioned UAW in here as well. The government is then going after General Motors, and if the government is part of this throwing them under the bus, wouldn't it then mean that General Motors might lose business down the road, there might be fines down the road, and perhaps their own unionship at the UAW may eventually be affected somehow in their earnings? Yeah, that's right. I mean, this, uh, I mean for, for General Motors, there's enormous, uh, there's, there's enormous reason here for them to get this right. And, and, and again, let's look at the history of the Chevy Cobalt, which is the car that's in, general, that's in uh, question here. The, the, the Cobalt was recalled three times from 2005 to 2007. I mean, General Motors, uh, and, and as like most auto manufacturers, is intensely interested in keeping their customers happy. So the, the Cobalt had already gone through three recalls. So it's not as if GM uh, puts these models on the market and then just forgets about them. I, I think what's happened here uh, with the switchgate issue with the ignition is that it, uh, it got lost in the bureaucratic process in GM. Uh, the engineers uh, considered this a stall issue, not a safety issue, and it was only some years down the road when they were able to connect it to airbags that it rose to a safety issue. So it's a lot more complicated than the big bad, bad corporation ignoring its customers. And if you look at the history of General Motors and this car, in fact, they've been very attentive to recalling this car when it's been in trouble. Well, they've been very attentive, and again, as you pointed out in an article where you talked about November 2004, January 2007, March 2010, GM was recalling the Cobalt, so it's not as if they simply just sat back on every instance. But wouldn't you still have to say, though, that there's got to be some sort of a cover-up here, though, Henry, because you look at this, you test it, you see this coming down, there's a problem, there's people getting hurt, there's lawsuits walking around, there's accidents. Nobody said anything. They just sat on this 
and waited until Congress got a hold of it and brought Mary Barra up front. It does reek of straight cover-up, no matter how you look at it. Well, it was actually, it was not Congress. It was the company that, that brought this forward. So it's GM that has been proactive on this. Uh, though it's many years uh, past when this when this defect was discovered. But again, the, I mean, you look at, and this is, this is not to absolve uh, General Motors, but you look at the turmoil that this com that, that company was in uh, beginning around 2005. Uh, the, the company was in deep financial uh, uh, straits uh, because, because its, its labor costs, its union costs were so high. Uh, that, that we do know that the company was trying to save costs at every turn uh, in order in order to try to get uh, cars out there at a competitive price. So, I mean, the, the, the U.S. automobile is, is the most complicated consumer product on the on the market. Uh, and, and, you know, it's not just an ignition issue. You have drivetrain issues. You have uh, power steering issues. There are all kinds of uh, issues that go into getting a car right. And, and the right. And I want to bring this back to craftsmanship, Henry. I, I want to bring this because you're, you're on the right track here. But I want to bring this back to American craftsmanship and what's happening. You pointed out that the industry is on track to recall more vehicles than the record setting year of 2004, which was 30 million. If we have General Motors and other automobile manufacturers recalling cars, what does it say about the actual process itself of building the car where they're not getting it right, it's slipshod manufacturing, and it can get somebody killed? Well, it's, it, 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 what, this, to, what the data tells you is the cars today are the safest they've ever been. The, uh, if, you, if you look across the averages, the J.D. Power averages, the Consumer Report averages of defects per car, they are at their lowest level in history. So I, I think what you're what you're seeing today in these recalls is a, is a hyper competitive market of manufacturers trying to get it right when there are defects, so they keep their customers. They keep their look at Consumer Reports um, uh, ratings for the Chevy Malibu. They used to be in the low 50, in the low 50s. Today it's in the high 80s. Look, look at uh, Honda, Toyota. They've been the leaders uh, right around 89. Uh, uh, percent uh, uh, approval rating from Consumer Reports. We're, we're killing less people on the roads than ever before. So these pro these these products are safer than ever. I think at the same time, that the digital revolution has allowed these companies to to retain more data than ever, so they can track down these problems and they can issue recalls and get the things right that they did uh, and correct the things they got wrong when they were on the assembly line. Would you be surprised at all if we reached a point where there are not criminal charges brought against somebody for some sort of negligence here, seeing as there, we're not talking about one death here, we're talking about multiple deaths, and that has to lead to something. Well, and, that, and that's what the courts are for. You know, the, the, the families of these victims have recourse uh, courts and figure this out. But again, you know, look at, look at the victims here that were involved in these crashes. They've, they've, identif they've identified 13 so far. Most of them were drunk or were inebriated in some manner. So th there were other circumstances at play. And uh, as they tracked down the black boxes of these cars, got into the black boxes, they had issues where, where drivers were losing control, control of the car. And then eventually the airbag wasn't going off. So ultimately they made a safety connection to, to these ignition switches. But the but the the initial accidents it, it's not entirely clear they were they were caused by the ignition switch in a lot of cases these were these were inebriated drivers uh, who then found themselves in a situation where they lost control of the car so they're they're complicated cases as they, as these cases tend to be and it's now up to GM to get the cars recalled and they'll have to face lawsuits no, no doubt about it. And they're going to have to face probably criminal action down the road as well. Henry, again, uh, your articles caught my attention. They caught the attention of our audience here. Uh, it's something we're following, and I'm sure we'll be in touch again. I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Good to be with you. Henry Payne joins us from National Review Online. He also talks about automobiles. And no matter how far we go on this, maybe it's just me, but I am still waiting for the day. That shoe has got to drop somewhere, and there's got to be people worried right now about spending a long time in jail. The Steve Mulsberg Show, Ed Berliner sitting in. We're back right here on Newsmax TV. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Mulsberg Show.